Hi, welcome to How to Read Poetry and Introduction. This is the first video for my Langdon Park School students for their GCSE Poetry Unit. We're doing this under the coronavirus, so obviously this is done remotely. What you're going to need is this booklet, which I've sent the PDF on the Google Classroom, and if you need it, you can email me. Uh, this is, it's got this beautiful poem by Apollinaire on the front, and what we're going to look at is seen and unseen poetry, and I'm just going to walk you through some of the basics today. Um, here we have um, the great Marilyn Monroe, so many photographs of her reading uh, are on the internet, and she said something really memorable that I would like you to think about is, I read poetry to save time. And I think that is really what it's all about, um, saving time. Poetry is short. It's condensed, it's compressed, um, and it's something that a lot of you seem to have an allergy towards. And I'm hoping, um, what my, my real goal in this unit is to help you stop having that allergy and start to stop being afraid of poetry and start being able to do something with it and to respond to it. Um, here's some advice on how you shouldn't read poetry. And these are things that I usually see from students when reading poetry with them. You do not start by looking for literary devices. It is the death of the poem if you start by telling me there's a simile here and there's some alliteration there. You're not letting the poem do its work. What you've got to do is allow yourself to read the poem a few times, be confused, um, let it do its work on you, respond to the poem, enjoy the poem, God help you, and figure out what the poem's about before you start talking to me about how the poet conveys their meanings. When we start with devices, you can you might be able to identify devices, but not knowing what the poem's about, you end up saying very little. Um, if you think about a poem as a riddle or something that has a hidden meaning, You'll always be trying to reach for something behind the poem as opposed to actually reading what's in front of you. Um, if you are like a number of my students and you give up, you cry, and you declare you don't like poetry, uh, it's never going to work. You're going to have to use this as an intellectual puzzle, as something that you can take apart, that you can figure out, kind of like a mathematical equation if you're that way inclined. If not, it's about figuring out how meaning is created in language. And what you got to remember is poetry is music lyrics, kids' songs, magic spells, advertising. Um, if you're religious, uh, particularly if you're a Muslim, poetry is the way that your religion is conveyed in its religious book. Um, and it's something you got to think about how, um, how, how, oh, hi, Sylvie. Hello too. I'm making this video about poetry. Can you just let me finish? Yeah. Um, uh, and what you got to remember is that uh, your the books that you engage in, the music you listen to, it's all poetry. Um, and finally, if you learn to read poetry, you can read anything. Okay, so let's take a look at the kind of path we're going on. Um, we have in year 11, you'll be revising uh, the ability to do, do creative writing and seen poems and unseen poems. So what are we trying to do? Um, in year nine, uh, for those of you in year nine, what you'll be focusing on is just the creative reading of poetry. If you're in year 10, you're also doing this, by the way, but uh, you'll be going to do more things too. So I want you to look at a number of different poems, strategies for reading poems, understanding of style, and different ways of creating meaning. You'll have personal response and creative responses as well. <clears throat> in year 10, for those year 10s, you'll continue the journey and start looking at social, historical, literary context, because you need context, again, to understand some of these poets. These are the known poets, the known poems. You'll have to revise them and know them quite well. So once you've developed all the skills of approaching poetry, then you're going to need to really dig in and know these poems really well. And then finally, once again, we'll have the literary essay, which is the analytic essay, um, language, form, and structure, applying the context, but something new and something quite difficult, the comparative analysis, which is really what this unit eventually aims towards. So here's uh, one of my favorite books uh, on poetry, Ezra Pound's How to Read. Um, I really, I'm just going to give you my version of uh, my advice on what to do. Don't worry if you understand poetry. Let's not go for understanding. Understanding is not what this is about. This is about reading. Reading, reading, reading. This isn't a novel, so you can reread a poem. 
And what I really want you to do is to make sure if you don't have a printer um, to use a PDF or do, uh, to use your phone or to do something somewhere where you're annotating and writing. Um, and you got to read a lot and you got to annotate a lot and annotate for yourself before you use the videos that I have available on the internet, which can give you or, or other other people on the internet who can tell you anything and everything you need to know about these poems. Um, you should read. We can't read as a class or in pairs. Hopefully you can read with someone, a friend or work online. But if you're alone, you, you lose that step. And that's what's sad about this time. But you got to write your ideas on the poem. Underline things, circle things, star, question marks, write words, your ideas and your responses on these poems. Um, if we had the opportunity, I'd be making you, inviting you to talk, because talk is the number one way you'll start to develop your ability to think about your own ideas about these poems. When you're writing, what we're not doing right away is running into the analytic essay. What we're going to do is try to make your thinking visible to yourself. Journal writing, um, writing to yourself, recording your thinking. You could start to take out evidence and think about what it means to you. And the most natural thing to do when reading a poem, you may believe it or you may not, is to write your own poem. If poetry, sometimes writing poetry is a bit challenging, what I'll be suggesting is exercises of just any form of creative writing where you transform the poem into um, a piece of prose. The most advanced thing you can do is mimic the style of the poet themselves. So, what does it mean, the creative reading of poetry? What do we do? Okay, well, the first thing I want you to think about is just actually read through the poem. Whenever you get through a poem, to a poem, you read through it, and you just read through it quickly, and then you read through it slowly, and don't worry about understanding. This first step is always missed by students. They think that there's some other magical thing that they're supposed to be doing. Uh, I'll just take you to this page. You think there's some other magical thing you should be doing, whereas actually the best thing you could do is to just read through the poem. Read it quickly and then read it slowly. Don't worry about understanding it. Um, try to use underlines, circles, a word you like, something that surprises you, something you think might be important. So other ways you could tick mark, you could... You could Whatever, whatever notation for you indicates that you want to pay attention, you should use that. And write on your poem. And you should write words. Um, is this about death? Is this about love? I like this. There is nothing I'm demanding of you other than learning to yourself respond to the poem. Next, read the poem again. So hopefully uh, you, when you do these lessons with me online, I'll be able to read to you. Um, listen really closely to the way you have pauses and breaks in meaning. Um, you should be reading all the way to the punctuation mark and trying to get there. Um, for, listen for things like rhyme, rhythm, alliteration, all the things that have to do with sound. You should try and think about sound um, and just how it affects you, how it makes you think and feel. Then you read it again. Uh, okay, so if we had the whole class, we could read it together and we could do all sorts of things like reading punctuation mark to punctuation mark. The third reading, when we read it out loud, um, what we're looking for is things, just sounds and ideas that are difficult, interesting, funny, disturbing, for example, but it could be anything. When you read it, you yourself, when you're doing these lessons out loud, uh, on your own, I really do want you to read out loud for yourself. And what I want you to do is kind of discover the emotion within the poem, overemphasize it, work through it. <coughs> See when you're reading it, what other meanings come out. And then finally, no big surprise, but you got to read the poem again, at least five times. This time, this is a very simple uh, way of taking control of the poem. If here's a poem, I want you to break the poem quite artificially into three parts um, and, and figure out where these breaks are, the beginning, middle, and end. And these are the structure of the poem. And what I want you to do is to be able to find at least... 
three quotes, six, sorry, six quotes in each, uh, sorry, two quotes in each section, and hopefully you can find some link between it to kind of give yourself some control over the poem. Now, this last step is what some of you do right away. And what I'd recommend you not do is, this is the this is the kind of I'm taking control of the poem moment. This is the kind of, I don't know what this poem's about, but I know that I can break the poem in three, find key quotations, ask myself questions, and start to think about, these are the important moments. What do these moments mean? How am I supposed to think about them? Um, this is what we are eventually trying to train ourselves to take control over our own reading process and to not be intimidated or frightened uh, about poetry at all. So what we're doing is when we're reading, I want you to be asking questions and writing them down, whether on the bottom of the poem, in the blank space, or in your own notes. you got to make notes of your own impressions, your own ideas, your own thoughts, Annotating is crucial. A blank poem is an unread poem. You want to learn to annotate for yourself. If you're worried, um, do it in pencil, and then you could erase. Uh, then, of course, you can annotate along with me or anyone else on the internet. You can learn everything you need about these poems. What you're trying to do is make your own ideas visible to yourself. If you can do that, you start to trust yourself. You start to realize that you have strategies for reading. Um, you are trying to find the words, ideas, and images that resonate with you, that mean something to you, that, that you realize are important. And individual quotations that grab you for whatever reason. What I would ad advise you to do somewhere else is make a list of all the quotes that you think are important. Um, because they're a really good way of practicing your analysis, for uh, getting to the core of a poet's style, and for remembering the key parts of a poem. And from these specifics, you're developing your own ability to personally respond to the poem. And that's really what this is all about. Okay, so I'll go back to Marilyn Monroe here. Um, so we've talked about how strategies for reading poetry. Um, I've talked to you about this uh, book that I have, will be sending on Google Classroom to you all. Um, in it is the main objectives, the map of the term, of everything we're going to be doing, all the poems we're doing, uh, the advice that I've just gone through with you, a little bit more detailed advice, and the actual poems that we'll be starting with. Our first poem will be, we'll, we'll begin by looking at Percy B. Shelley in the next video. Uh, I hope that you're able to print these poems out. Uh, if it's an issue you can read along on your computer or on your phone. Uh, please do get in contact if you need any help.